Hey guys, Stellar here. I'm back with another video for you guys. I know, I know, I'm getting close to the end. I promise you I have other things to get to, but I don't have time to sit down and make a three hour video, so I've done it in little bits and pieces, but I promise you I am almost done. But before I get into this video, let me drop in a little disclaimer here. Fair use disclaimer, any video clips that I'm using in this video fall under fair use for commentary. They aren't being used to harass or bully or anything like that. Instead, they're being used to address some allegations that have been made about me. All right, so with that said, let's continue, shall we? After the last confrontation I had with Dee, I had finally reached my breaking point. I mean, barely a month had gone by with the whole blowout with the group, and here D was at it again. So I was like, nope, no way. I'm not doing this anymore. I'm not wasting any more time or energy on D or any of it. This time I was completely done for good. I felt as though she had totally disregarded all that I had shared with her. She had disregarded my boundaries. She had disregarded my advice. She had disregarded my feelings, and she had disregarded the fact that I was suffering my own loss. So I was absolutely 100% done with D, and I did not care what the outcome was with the ATX situation, and no, I wasn't going to get involved in any of that. That was on her. That was her issue. She could handle it on her own. I had had enough, and I was done, and I bid D adieu forever. But now came the tricky part. How was I going to keep moving forward without letting our personal drama be known publicly? You see, people had been coming to me asking for another sassy stream. They wanted to know, when are the sassy sisters going to do another stream? When are we going to have a live stream? When are we going to do this? When are we going to do that? And, I mean, we hadn't really done anything since our last blowout, and people weren't aware of that mess. They didn't know what had happened just a month prior. They didn't know that, you know, pretty much the sassy sisters were done for. No one was even aware of what happened in the situation that had played out between D, Sadie, and the rest of us. Why? Because we kept it between us. But how was I going to explain to those who kept on asking me, when's the next stream, when's the next Sassy Sester stream, how, how was I going to explain that? I mean, I couldn't keep blowing them off. I couldn't blow them off forever. And I felt as though I was basically lying to everyone, which was something I really hated to do. I mean, I was being honest when I did explain that we all had real life issues going on, but the honest truth was that I knew the Sassy Sisters would be no more and there would never be a Sassy Sister stream ever again. So I racked my brain thinking, how do I get out of this without putting all our business out there? Where's my escape from all of it? I still wanted to be respectful to Sadie, just being me, D, and Sally. Sally hadn't been around for most of this, so I didn't even know if she knew what was going on. I hadn't talked to her, so I didn't know if she knew what was going on. So I thought, how am I going to do this? How am I going to be able to just walk away without people questioning and wondering? Because they had done that in the Kaylee situation. They knew something was going on. I knew people were smart enough to figure out something had happened, but how was I going to go about it? Now, I'm sure for those of you who have been following the drama with the Sassy Sisters, you have heard about the tweet that ended it all, and how it was I that made everything public according to D. Or perhaps you missed that. Maybe you guys don't know about that. You know, not everybody has a Twitter. Well, let me help you out, because I do have that tweet. But first, I'm going to play a clip from D's live stream that she did on October 28th. The live stream that pretty much pushed me to make these videos. Um, you know, it just, everything came to a head in that live stream. And I just thought, what the heck, I'm going to make my video. I'm going to tell my side of things and be done with it. But I just want to get it out there and just move forward. So anyhow, here's the clip from Dee's live stream where she mentions uh, the tweet yet again. So I'm going to play it and then we'll talk about it. Oh yeah, that's what I want to say. Then I started the whole thing when, uh, what was it? Trash, truthfully, ref, truthfully, ref. She said, truthfully, rev. Oh, yes, shut up. Truthfully, ref, or whatever, uh, said, uh, who understood where are the sassy sisters and all this? 
And here is that infamous tweet. This is the tweet that has been thrown in my face, our faces, ever since the day it was posted on Twitter back in May. This is the tweet that I, nor the others, were, you know, supposed to answer. We had no right to answer this publicly, according to D, even though we were all tagged in it. This is the tweet we should have just ignored, because we said we would all keep this private, right? If you ask me, I think it was a blessing in disguise, because here was my way out. Then Nana felt the need to talk about it. And that's when I was like, I thought we're gonna keep it quiet. But no, when it's directed at her, then we're talking about it. I have to admit, her tone right there really gets under my skin. Anyhow, you're darn right, I responded. And who was D to dictate whether I could or could not respond? What she failed to understand and get through her head at that time is that I had absolutely zero loyalties to her by then. And any agreement we had we had made prior to all of that had gone out the window. So yes, I responded to a tweet that I had every right to respond to. By this point, we were all over it. We were over making excuses for the group that no longer existed. So yes, Sadie, just being me, and myself responded to the tweet. And here are a few of those responses. We had every right to respond to this tweet. Again, there was no more loyalties to anybody. Sally was not around, so she didn't make a response. She wasn't in there. I don't even know if she knew that this tweet existed. That's how I take it up with Nana, Derizzle. Don't lump me into no, all this then all bullshit. Of, all of a sudden, Sadie come, came by. Then you came by. So you were all against me. D can see it as... We were all being against her, but it was no longer about being for or against. It was us being over all of the bullshit that we had been dealing with. After the That's way you treated easy. us, do you? how could you blame us? <sighs> you treat your friends like we're second-class citizens, Dora. <laughs> Sorry, mm -hmm. not just you. Well, you do. That is not true. You see how Dee just dismisses the way just being me is explaining how... She was made to feel. How does one tell another that they are wrong for feeling that way? I agree with just being me. By the end of all of this, I felt the very same way. So after that tweet, it was pretty much out in the open that the sassy sisters were no more. And there wasn't a whole lot of detail as to what happened. I mean, it was just out there that we weren't a group anymore and that people have gone different directions and that certain people weren't friends. And that was it. There was really no detail. But the fact was, the group was no more. So I decided to make a video, and I just basically said, yes, the group was no more, and we hadn't been a group for, you know, a while. It had been a month. And I just shared some of my feelings as to how I felt the direction was going with the group and why I was choosing to step away, but that I was still friends with those people in the group, because I was, I still am, with the exception of one person. Um, so yeah, I made a video and just kind of shared some of my thoughts and opinions about the group in general and it not be, uh, me not being a part of the group. I didn't go into detail. I didn't say exactly, you know, what had happened. I more or less expressed that I felt it was turning into just constantly talking about the drama queen and I didn't want to have a part in that. I wanted to go back to having fun, being fun. So that was kind of the basis of my video. However, Dee missed the whole point of my video. The video is still there. It's still on this channel. You could listen to it for yourself. But Dee totally misconstrued everything that I said in that video. And she went to making a video herself. But in her video, she seemed to spill some of the tea, if you will. You see, the video I had made wasn't so much about what went on in the group, but how I felt about the direction it had been headed in. After I heard Dee's video, or watched her video, 
I felt like she had completely thrown me under the bus, so to speak. Uh, I have that video, but I'm just going to drop in the screenshots here so you could see what I'm talking about. I left her a comment under that video as well. I'll drop that in here. Okay, so this is what was in uh, Dee's video. And I have to say very quickly here, this first sentence here about Sadie putting it on blast. Sadie never made an agreement after that second blowout to keep this quiet to protect the whole situation. She never agreed to that. She wasn't in on any conversation. Now, we all had agreed to keep quiet about it the first time around, but this second time around, no, there was no agreement. And so, you know, by Dee saying that, oh, Sadie just putting it out there on blast, there was no agreement from Sadie. She only mentioned it because she was tagged in the tweet that I showed earlier. And as for why Sadie felt the need to block Sally, why was that of any of Dee's concern? Sally knows the reasoning behind it, and Sally and Sadie are just fine. As far as just being me, um, she told Dee things that she did not want to hear, so that's why she was upset with her. As for me being in the chat, again, let me say, yes, I was in the chat, but I was not in there when the ATXs first started talking about Dee. And again, I was done coming to Dee's rescue. And as far as choosing a side, who was making me choose a side? <laughs> I don't play that game. I, I don't get that. I, I wasn't choosing a side. I wasn't getting involved, period. And as far as, you know, she's saying that I was talking crap, so by me continuously telling her, beware of the ATXs, that's talking crap, whatever. And why did the ATXs feel the need to strike D? Does anyone remember that? Well, it was because of the drawing that Dee had done. And yeah, I thought the drawing was pretty childish, uh, pretty low, especially for somebody who was continuously telling others, preaching to others uh, about not body shaming others, that that wasn't nice. So yeah, I thought it was hypocritical. I wasn't even around for that drawing. I didn't know that Dee had a stream about that. I didn't even know that the ATXs had struck her. I wasn't all up into that. I did see the drawing because it was dropped in a DM to me. And yeah, I thought that was hypocritical, but that was their reasoning for striking her. I had nothing to do with that. So when she made this video, I was like, why, why are you throwing this all out there? I don't even care. I did not care that she had gotten struck. I didn't care that she was beefing with the ATXs. I didn't care at that point. I was done. Oh, so it was her that was protecting the group by not talking about Kaylee. <laughs> Yet she made mention of the situation a few times. You know, there came a point where I was just so over her throwing that, you know, she couldn't talk. We kept her quiet. She was silenced. I got sick of it. And I told her, if you need to say something, say it. Have your say. Go at Kaylee. I, I, I don't understand why she felt we controlled her so much. How do we control what she says and does? She could have made a video. She could have talked about it at any time. So if you have time, go ahead and go back all the way to May where I made two videos. The first video, excusing myself from the group. And then the second one, clarifying what I meant by that video, since Dee misconstrued what I said. And take a listen and tell me if you see the difference. I was not on the attack. I was merely dismissing myself from the group as best as I could. I didn't throw anyone under the bus the way Dee did. But I did make it clear that the group was no more. And I was blocked after I left her this comment. I was pretty upset after that, and we, she and I, had it out on Twitter. By the end of it, it was just over. It was just done. I said all that I ever needed to say about D, 2D, about the group. That was it. That was the last day that I wanted to talk about this. Now, I did go back on May 20th and made another video clarifying what my video was all about because I guess Dee thought it was directed about the group. I don't know what she was thinking, but I made another video clarifying what I meant by that video, and it didn't matter anymore. The group was done, and I was moving on. I was still friends with everybody in the group. The only thing that 
was, um, was still kind of, I was still unsure of was how Sally was going to react to all of this because she was not around. And I kind of was, I guess, for lack of better words, afraid that perhaps she would come back and, you know, be upset with me because of the falling out that I had with D. I knew she and D, you know, talked more on a personal basis. And I thought, is she going to, you know, not want to talk to me anymore because there's this problem going on or, you know, there's no more friendship between uh, D and I. Is that going to cost my friendship with Sally? And I hadn't talked to her, so I didn't know if, you know, D had explained to her what was going on. I didn't know if she was aware of it and just stayed out of it. I didn't know what her feelings were going to be. I didn't know how she was going to respond to all of this. So that had me a little concerned. You know, I didn't want to lose Sally as a friend. I think she's a great person. She's been a great friend. She's been a great support. And I would just, I didn't know what to think. But then D came back with a response to my video, which kind of, I don't know, it really got under my skin. But then it made me really think like, oh, gee, you know, Sally upset with me as well because Dee said um, in response to the video I made where I was explaining how I was walking away from the group she said you know you had no permit you didn't have my permission or Sally's permission to make this video and at first I was like wait a minute I never ask anybody for permission to make a video yes I've asked people if I'm using their content I if I respect them enough I go and ask them you know can I use your content can I use this for my video but I'd never ask anybody permission to make a video. I didn't know how to get permission to make a video. I have gone to the group and asked for their advice, asked their opinions on videos, but never have I had to ask permission for a video. So yeah, things were just done over with. And after I made that video, I was just like, I'm done. I'm going to move forward. We've had it out on on Twitter and we're done with it. It's done, buried. I've said all that I ever need to say to D. I've said all that I need to say about the situation and time to move on. And I had done just that. I was back to making my videos. I was back doing my thing. But then I started getting messages that D was talking about me on her stream. D was talking about the situation on her stream because she was throwing little breadcrumbs out there. She wasn't really getting into it, but she would drop little hints. So I would get these messages. And for the most part, I ignored it, as did the others. We didn't care. We're like, whatever, let her have her say, let her do whatever. Well, that was until July. She made mention of it again on a live stream. I will drop that clip in here, and then we will talk about that. I had it really rough that those weeks. I had, yeah, sorry to say, but the sassies who uh, stabbed me in the back, most of them, and uh, um, that was that was actually most hurtful than every every other thing, because I really th I really thought people were different. Um, then sweets was going really bad, and I feel bad for that too. Um, nothing to do with the sassy sisters, by the way. I don't uh, know. It has nothing to do with them. It has to do with the relationship we had it had nothing to do with people out well it started with uh Kaylee of course but uh that is not what uh, this fight was about okay okay at least I well I was mad because I couldn't say anything and then when someone said hey where are the sassy sisters backing Doreen up and I'm like yeah why aren't they <laughs> because they want to be uh Oh my god, I'm gonna get shit for this. I'm not gonna talk about it, but uh, the only yeah. thing I want to say is they could talk about it, but I had to shut my mouth. Let me put it that way. I had to shut my mouth many times. And you yeah. know, all of a sudden when they're being questioning, they uh, they just throw it out like they don't look like the bad guy. Okay. That's just what really pulled me off. Like, Okay, you see, there she goes again. You know, that it was all of us that we were backstabbers and we did her wrong. And she's referring to the ATX situation. Again, I didn't care to get involved. I wasn't going to get involved. So I guess she sees it as me being a backstabber, whatever. But the thing is, why mention it? 
Why mention it and then say, oh, I'm going to get so much crap for mentioning this. So she knew darn well. So I took to Twitter. And I'll drop the tweet in here so you could see for yourself where I basically told her, back off, shut up, leave me alone. And she didn't. And she kept at it. Because there were other streams after that. And she still made mention of it. And she still poked at it. I can even remember going into a stream that she was in. And she kind of started with me in there as well. And I just kind of ignored it. I wasn't playing this game. But she wasn't done. She wasn't over it. She kept provoking it, provoking it. Until her live stream on October 28th where everything was out there, and I just said, to hell with it. I'm going to tell my side of it. I'm going to tell my side of it whether people want to hear it or not. You can listen. You don't have to listen. I'm going to put it out there. I'm going to have my say and be done with it because I am done with it. I am over it. I want to move forward, and I'm going to move forward. I plan on doing different videos. I would like to do reaction videos to some of the shows that I'm watching, but I just wanted to get this out of the way. Did it drag on for a few videos? Sure. But I don't have five hours to sit down and talk in a video. Aside from that, I wanted to break it down because I get sidetracked and I'm not going to stay on track. And people don't want to sit there for five hours and listen to me talk about this ridiculous crap that has played out on YouTube. Oh my gosh, this is YouTube, really. But I've learned my lesson. And you know, I should have heed my own warning because... I guess you could say I did it to myself. I saw the type of person that D was with others. That's why I was cautious. That's why I was guarded. But I still proceeded with this friendship, really in the back of my head, knowing that it could end up being nasty and ugly, just as it had been with others. So I only have myself to blame. But look, I don't wish any ill will on D. I think she's very talented. She has a great voice. She's very artistic, and I wish her well in that. I've always given her support. I've always given her kudos for the positive things that she does. Sadly, she got too much of the TT toxicity, and it blinded her from the true friendship she really could have had. And I'm, you know, I'm done with it. I'm over it. I hope, uh, you know, and for anybody out there who's supporting her, uh, supporting D and, you know, a friend of D, that's great. That's wonderful. Everybody needs to have support. I've said that with the drama queen as well. Or anybody else, that's fine. If those are your types of people, that's fine. Back them up, support them. That's great. As for myself, I am done and this book has ended. This is the final chapter and I am moving forward. I am not sitting around waiting to see if D does a quote unquote clap back or has a rebuttal or adds anything else to the story, I'm over it. I have shared my experiences. I have shared my thoughts and opinions on all of it. Um, these are my thoughts and opinions. These are my experiences. And perhaps D sees things differently. Um, and that's fine if she does. But these were my experiences. This is how I felt. These are my feelings, my experiences. And nobody could change the way I felt, the way I feel, the way what I experienced. Um, but that's going to be it for this saga of the Sassy Sisters. Sassy Sisters are no more. And we'll keep on doing what we're doing. Maybe get together and do a few streams here and there. I don't know. Um, I have plans for my channel. I'll get back to my videos. But this is done and I'm burying it. I'm over it. I'm done. I'm moving forward. But those are my experiences with the group formerly known as the Sassy Sisters. All right, that's all I have for you guys today. Remember, each and every one of you are awesome. Now go out there and make it a stellar day.